But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. This kind of weather should kind of tell you where I'm at. What is good, everybody? It's your boy MJ up in the building. Here I am in the PNW. What the hell is PNW? Pacific Northwest. I'm tapping in with my boy Dylan. These balls and exotics, we're gonna tap into his collection with it. I cannot wait to show you guys. But before we get started, guys, do your boy a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell that we are on top of every single vlog that I drop here on the Snake Drop Sessions Vlogs channel. But yeah, man, drop a comment, let me know how you're liking this. But let's tap in. I'm getting soaking wet. I am not trying to get pneumonia. And let's see what my boy Dylan's collection is all about. Chee! Yoshi, a blue face rhino iguana from Thai Park. Originally, we got him from our buddy Roddy, uh, but he was originally from Thai. Just a chill dude. It was a dream lizard for Amanda, and you know, wanted her to have it. And well, I guess we both kind of fell in love with the dude. It's an eight by four by four. Give him cohab. So, and what is this? Yep, we have him cohabbed with a red foot. Uh, she'll probably come out at some point once she sees that there's more greens there. Cages are just that, it's a cage, it's a bedroom, right? You go there to eat, fuck, sleep, right? right. So we gotta take them out, you can't just leave them in there, you know, socialize them, that's, that's a big part of it. Here's the thing, with berms especially, not so much retics, that's a different story, but with berms, they're very much, I hate to say, like a ball python, but behaviorally, as far as they like tighter quarters, they are similar in that manner, right? Right. So for me though, they still need to come out and exercise. They still need to work those muscles, work that food down. You know, they're gonna be wandering around finding different spots to hide in the wild. So why don't we let them out and chill? Plus, that's my time to enjoy them. Yeah, so this is Karma. Uh, I got her, it was actually a local gentleman I got her from, but she was originally produced by Keith Basilko. She's a granite poshead albino green lab. She actually just laid a month ago. Uh, already back on food, super inquisitive. She is just such a sweetheart. Yeah, I hook train these guys from the second they're born. Even before they shed when I'm pulling them out, I hook train them. So just to get them used to, you know, being touched, hey, this yeah. isn't food time. That way it's just instilled from birth and that way they're sweethearts like this when they get older. You see, she didn't even really hiss. Some are talkers, they will hiss a little bit. She's not bucking but you or anything. She doesn't do anything, man. I can run the vacuum right by her head. I could literally touch her head with the vacuum if I want. She, she won't do anything. Funny. She'll just move her head. Be like, Jeez. damn it, dad. What's the age on this girl? She is four years old now. Wow. Yep. So she's definitely not even maxed out on size yet. Nowhere near, yeah. She's always growing. Eats like a pig, as much as I let her at least. I'm sure people are wondering like how often you feed a snake like this. So I actually don't go off as like a strict feeding schedule. I don't believe in that. So I kind of feed them, I mean, if, you're, if I were to give you a rough number, three to four weeks, okay. I give them a meal. Uh, and then I'll let them digest, and then I'll, I'll switch it up too. I'll give them a small meal, and then maybe I'll feed them three weeks later. I look at body condition more than anything versus a date to feed them. She laid 42 perfectly healthy eggs. Yep. First plus ever. So do you think she could lay even more when she's a full grown adult? Like... Oh yeah, I think she'll easily be a 60, 70 egg layer. There's been up to almost 100 eggs. Jeez, uh, bro. But your normal number is 40 to 50. That's a common number. So <laughs> Dylan's putting away the female that he just displayed 
played and I, I was curious to see what the male he paired up to her um, and got the 40 eggs from. So we're gonna check out this male right now. So this is Gizmo. He is a green uh, double head albino granite. He was actually one of my first Burmese python morphs that I ever got. And uh, he's just an amazing dude. Super bright for uh, green of his age and size. No, I mean, be honest, Dylan, female male Burmeses could really be different in temperaments, right? I mean, for the most part, or I mean, unless this is wrong, but do you feel like a lot of males are a lot harder to work with than females when it comes to Burmeses? To be honest, no. Wow, I don't okay. see any Good difference. Bastard. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I will also be the first one to tell you that all those guys telling you that males stay small are full of shit. Males right. will still easily push 12 feet. Uh, I mean, they might take a little bit longer and they might be a little more slender, but they can and will still reach 12 to 14 feet. He's probably pushing 10, I'm about six. Right. So he's probably pushing 10 foot. Uh, he's about five years old now. Um, so like I said, it might take a little longer for them to get that size. But for the most part, that's because uh, breeders are just pushing their females. They're feeding them heavier, they're growing them faster so they can get the eggs. They want to get that breed moving. You know? So even though this guy, he's a big dude, he still has no problem breeding, right? I mean, because nah. a lot of people try to say, well, yeah, if you feed them too much, they don't they don't want to breed. I feel like that's a big myth No, no. Nah, nah. So this guy actually is stuck on rats. He won't eat rabbits to save my damn life. Uh, but he'll chow down jumbo rats like it's nothing. Uh, and he will breed anything you put him to. The more problem with berms is the female catching her in the mood and cycling her right. If she's right. not in the mood, she, you'll know. So sure. you better pull that male. So if I introduce a male and the female's throwing up her tail, she starts pissing, Wait, she's shit, tail yeah. wagging, yeah. the females will actually buck. Wow. If that's the case, I'm immediately gonna pull that male. I'm not gonna walk away at all, and I'm gonna take him out because otherwise you're, you're really risking your male at that point. Uh, that female, if given the chance and really not in the mood, will injure your male. Wow. Not very common, but it, it can happens. and will happen. I mean, if um, it's gonna happen with retics, what doesn't make you think it won't happen with Burmeses? I exactly, mean. and I mean, it's a lot more chill, but it's more so, I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, breeding berms is like breeding balls. I'm sorry, but I want to ask those people, how many berms have you actually fucking bred? <laughs> <laughs> to cycle these animals differently. And like I said, if a female's not in the mood, you need to pull that male. Don't walk away. I never pair and walk away. It's if I do, animal, I'm man. like, I'll go outside, you know, take a quick dab, come back in, and I'm still paying attention the whole time. This is the perfect big snake for you. Yeah. It really is. I've worked with retics. I don't own anacondas, but I have a bunch of friends who do and breed them, as well as African rocks. Uh, the stars, all the other big species. Honestly, you cannot ask for a bigger or a nicer big snake than a bird. Let's check out Carmela. She looks very juicy. So she was uh, one of my first Burmese. Unfortunately, my very first Burmese is not with us anymore. Uh, but she is the second Burmese I ever got. And honestly, she might just be a normal head albino. This girl will forever hold my heart as one of my favorite animals in the entire collection. I just love this freaking snake. And this is what made me fall in love with berms. Yeah, this is, this so, is there's nothing normal about this. No, nah, she's super bright. Oh, wow, bro. I mean, if you guys have that seen isn't... a lot of normal berms, they're, they don't look like her. No. She's super bright, you know. And she's such a sweetheart, man. Oh. I've had five-year-old kids holding her. You know, she's been around big groups of people with no issue. She just Hi. likes to cruise. So but pretty, bro. She's gorgeous. Just finished getting her out. I kind of like to just give her a time. Yeah, a little stretch. Yeah. I'd probably say at least 13, 13. Yeah, 13. Um, and she's given me clutches three years or four years, excuse me, sorry. Uh, but I've actually only bred her for two of those years. The last two years in a row, she's laid retained sperm clutches uh, that were a mix between fertile and unfertile eggs, but all in all, perfectly healthy clutches, which is pretty amazing to me. I always thought, you know, they could have one retained sperm clutch and after that it was done. I have not bred this girl in over two years and she's still giving me Clutch fertile clutches. clutches. Yep, she just likes being a mama. I would say one of the biggest, like, prizes you have of owning a snake like this is just sitting down with it and just 
realizing you're like with a, a living giant, you know, like something that was here prehistorically, you know, like. Absolutely, man. Now I see that your choice of substrate is paper and I always felt like that's your best number one go-to if you're keeping big snakes Dude, in my opinion. 100%. If you look back at some of my old content, you'll see I put Repti Chip in there. I tried the Cypress. How did you do that? <laughs> I don't know how I did that, okay? It was literally every day just cleaning, swapping out half the cage. I may as well have just put a freaking snow shovel in there and scooped right. it all out, which is a waste of money too. And here's the big thing too is, even if you spot clean on a big snake like this, when they piss, it's going on the floor and it's soaking in. So underneath that dry stuff you see right. is a bunch of wet ass, nasty, piss covered substrate. Shit. In my opinion, that's freaking horrible. You don't yeah. want to be leaving them in there, right? right? Put that mixed with heat and humidity, you got a recipe for disaster. Message! Right. But with the paper, I can clean one of these cages in five, 10 minutes. Hold it's up. spotless, it's sanitary, the waste is minimal. Right. I'm, the cost is amazing. I buy a roll of this paper, a 140 foot roll for 15 bucks or just under 15 bucks. And it'll last me a while and it's just easy. Roll it out, chop it, you know, fold it and throw it in there. I can do it in minutes and like I said, it's fully sanitary. So I don't have to worry about any of that. It's not gonna hide bugs. It's not gonna hide mold or, you know, any sort of bacteria or anything like that. So with these guys, I will 100% always keep them on paper. I tried the substrate, it looks great, sure. But besides that, it's not practical and I don't think it's the best for them. I wanna keep right. them clean and healthy and with berms already being known to have RI issues without proper care, I don't wanna to add to that issue whatsoever. Before we get into this, you've had retics at one point, right? Yeah. Like you had more than just one at one point, Yeah, right? I think we were up to four or five at one point. With plans um, of breeding or just to, like you just admired keeping them as a pet? A little bit of both, to be honest, okay. just because I find them amazing and beautiful. But honestly, I just, I really love the berms and uh, this is gonna sound like a hypocritical thing to say because I keep them and I know a lot of people who do and breed them. I just don't think retics are the right big snake for everybody. Message! And I think there's enough big retic breeders that I don't need to be one of them. I was like, I you were saying earlier, you can just get, you can get hurt, dude. The, oh man, this thing is gorgeous. So this is Primrose. She is a Platy Phantom Golden Child. Um, oh, I, knew there was, I knew there was Golden Child in that. Nah, she's just a goofy one. It's kind of like Karma, the one thing I didn't uh, mention. She's a little goofball too. She likes to blow bubbles in her water. Oh the yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that page, before. She'll come just bury her head in the water and just start blowing bubbles in the water. It's actually kind of cute, honestly, but I'm in no rush. I don't power feed my stuff. Like I said, I pay attention to body condition. And in my eyes, retics shouldn't be freaking Twinkies. They're a much no. more slender, you know, uh, active bodied animal. More muscular. Keep all your eggs, right? So you have your incubator, you have yep. the Burmese eggs in there. Um, you also have ball python stuff, right? Ball python stuff is also in there. Ball python stuff for me is just kind of now starting to really roll and drop. Uh, so we've got two, ball, or two Burmese clutches in there, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I had three Burmese clutches this year. The first clutch was a complete miss. The eggs that did look good, I lost. But we still have two nice, perfectly healthy clutches in there for berms. Three ball clutches so far. I'm expecting five more clutches in the next 60 days and hopefully another five to 10 after that. Uh, but honestly, I've gotten rid of a lot of my stuff to invest in more puzzle stuff. Which one, so I'll show you the first visual we hit, which was a Mojave puzzle girl. And, and ever since then, I've just okay, been absolutely obsessed with it. And I didn't like Mojave either, to be honest with you. It looks even better in person. So this is just like, puzzle Mojave right here. Yep, just Mojave puzzle. Whites coming up from the belly that are just really insane to me. It almost looks like if you were to like flip the snake upside down, it's like paint drips, right? Right. We hit this fucking amazing boy. Eve, this is GHI Mojave Leopard Yellow Belly 100% Head Clown. Man, that's wow. powerful, bro. So, honestly, I can't wait to breed this boy next year, take him to some red stripe clown girls and yeah. see what pops out. Yeah. Uh, like this pastel granite spot nose clown girl. Really excited to breed this girl. Wow. I could live with or without the pastel and the clown, but some, having some, a nice, you Some jeans make pastel relevant, man. Yeah, and if I can get DG into this, well, guess what? Pastel makes DG awesome, so. <laughs> this is a Beoc female. I named her Miss McGonagall. An import animal, and I know a lot of people hate on imports, but she's a longtime captive. Uh, to our best knowledge, she's five years old. 
Uh, she was with my buddy for two years. Uh, it was with his buddy for a couple years. Then it was with him for two years before I scooped her up. And uh, honestly, I'm really glad I scooped her up. Oh, this is what made me like you, bro. This is really insane. fall in love with these guys. No man, those blues are intense. To be honest, I'm still be learning, so, so nice. I have no idea. But Ooh, I would love to eventually get to breed her one day, even if it's just for the experience. You know, I don't want to be thing... some big chondro guy. I just want to have the experience. And that's what it's all about is really the experience. It's more so. personal. And the cool thing is that you have a really nice thriving female where all you need to do is get that male. And, yep. and it takes a matter of a couple years. Exactly. And it could happen. It could and happen she's a long-term captive. She's been tested multiple, multiple times, at least four times to my knowledge. Uh, and even after stressful situations, every time she's came back negative and she's just beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, this is the favorite snake, my favorite snake that you busted out.